Alex, it seems like everybody today is talking about multiple universes, many universes different than ours, a multiverse. Let's get into this now and really find out how this makes sense, discussing what it really means and then the mechanisms of if it could be true, how could it be generated? How can we make multiple universes different than ours? Okay, so first we have to decide what we call a different universe. Right. So there are two uh, meanings in which the term is actually used by physicists. Okay. Uh, one is uh, it is just a different, very remote region of our universe, uh, such that you cannot travel to it. It is, it is causally disconnected from us. We cannot send uh, any information there. We cannot even observe it. So for all practical purposes, it is, it is a different But it's part of the same universe. space-time in which we live ourselves. That's right. Okay. So this is uh, one option, and the other is a totally disconnected space-time. This is a totally disconnected universe. That, of course, is, uh, is a different universe. Of course, philosophers call the universe everything that exists, then you can have only one universe. If, we deal, with, if we deal with philosophers, they can make up names for anything. I mean, who knows right. what, what they say. <laughs> Sometimes they use universe with a capital U as to mean everything, and a small u to mean some universe. Sometimes they use the the word world, or one phrase I like is all that exists, or all there is, or something like that, and to encompass it. All right, let, let's still deal with your two categories. I like that. We begin to understand it. So let's deal first with the those universes within our space-time, uh, and, and how we generate other universes like that. Uh, right. So the mechanism for generating these other universes is provided by the theory of inflation. Um, Inflation is a period of extremely fast expansion of the universe uh, that occurred in our local region uh, and ended 14 billion years ago in a Big Bang. But according to this theory, inflation continues in other parts of the universe. Uh, now, inflation uh, is driven by this uh, peculiar material, which is called false vacuum, and which is characterized by repulsive gravity. And this is what causes the universe expand at a staggering rate. Um, and then this false vacuum is unstable and decays. Uh, its decay is a probabilistic quantum mechanical process. So it happens, it happened here 14 billion years ago, but in other parts of the universe it hasn't happened yet. Uh, so, uh, multiple Big Bangs occurred before ours in different places, and uh, um, an unlimited number of other Big Bangs will happen elsewhere in the future. Now, the Big Bang is triggered by this prior period of inflation, which, at least in our case, was extremely short, even though it expanded the universe enormously, much, much less than a very small fraction of a second was the duration well, of it. I should say that we cannot really tell how long it is. In, inflation takes very little time to do its job, yeah. which is to create a huge universe. Yeah. Uh, but inflation uh, is eternal in the sense that it never ends completely in the entire universe. So it may happen very quickly in this region and uh, a little, take a little longer in this other region but there are always, at any time, there are parts of the universe where inflation still continues. Now, when you say still, is it the same original inflation that has different uh, incarnations, or is it, or is it uh, new kinds of inflation that pop up quantum mechanically in different places? Uh, well, it, imagine that we have a little volume uh, occupied by this uh, uh, strange uh, stuff, false vacuum, right. gravitational repulsive stuff. So this volume starts expanding at a, at a tremendous rate. Yeah. And uh, parts of it fall out like ours uh, to create regions like ours. Uh -huh. But uh, the volume multiplies much faster than uh, these uh, big bangs are taking space out of it. So at later times, you have even more inflating uh, regions. And uh, so all of them uh, grew out possibly from one tiny initial um, speck of space filled with false vacuum. So it's those later uh, uh, inflating periods which end in their own kind of Big Bang of some kind, 
they are part of the original uh, inf uh, inflation uh, uh, um, uh, that, that occurred, that, that triggered our universe. Our universe just, just uh, uh, decayed faster. Uh, right. So uh, in our part of space, inflation ended earlier. Yeah. And it created this uh, region which grows. We see only a tiny part of it. Mm -hmm. So this region keeps growing. Uh, and uh, in other places, inflation ended later and also started uh, uh, islands that kind of in this inflating sea of false vacuum that grow. But the distances between the islands grow in even faster than the islands themselves expand. So space for new islands, uh, for new or in some models they are more like bubbles. I say islands because uh, depending on uh, the underlying uh, fundamental theory, uh, these regions can be kind of uh, irregular regions. So if you look at them, they will look like kind of archipelago <laughs> in a sea. Uh, but in other models, they are like spherical bubbles. So they uh, pop out like bubble in water, uh, boiling water, and start uh, start expanding. In each of these different regions, do we have uh, because it's part of the same space time? Uh, are, are the laws of physics similar, or they don't have to be? Uh, well, they don't have to be, and um, uh, it's quite possible that some of these. Uh, bubble universes or island universes are uh, very different, strikingly different from what we have around here. Uh, it all depends on the fundamental theory, whether or not, uh, whether it has some, uh, well, I should say that the properties of the, our world are determined by a set of numbers, about 30 numbers, which are called constants of nature. Right. And um, uh, it's possible that these constants are just fixed. And this is what most physicists believed until recently, that they're universal constants, that for some reason they have these values that they have, and then all regions would be the same. Uh, however, uh, now there are good reasons to believe that this is not so, that in fact uh, there are different uh, vacua. Uh, I should say that the properties of the matter is the, are determined by the properties of the underlying vacuum. Just like the properties of s sound, for example, are determined by the material in which it propagates. So, um, uh, string theory, which is our best candidate for the fundamental theory of nature, suggests that there exists a huge number of different possible vacua characterized by different uh, fundamental constants. And if that's the case, inflation will necessarily generate regions with all those Wow. Uh, different properties. Uh, so that's probably the most plausible scenario. If I have to bet, yeah. I would bet that this is what our universe looks like. 